So, uh, hello, my name is Steffen Wangerow. Um, I'm here today uh, representing two organizations. Uh, you can see it down on the presentation. Uh, on the right side, the Rundertisch Reparatur, which is a German organization for repairing, uh, yeah, for repairing interested organizations or companies. For example, um, the consumer organizations, but also the, the science, um, and yeah, uh, uh, German Watch, Anstiftungen, um, I fix it is, uh, is a member, the, the waste management associations and many more also handcrafters. And uh, the other organization is the Wangerow GmbH, um, which is a family company in Reutling near Stuttgart. Um, we are a network for professional handcrafters, workshops all over Germany, around about 1,000 uh, professional handcrafters. Yeah, and I would like to talk to you about what went wrong in the past, in the last uh, decades. Um, what led us to, uh, to get um, to a throwaway society? And before I start, I want to tell you a little story. This is a picture of my grandfather in the 60s. He was a, I don't know the English word, he was like, did it, did it, did it. yeah, the Morris, uh, hobby Morsing, and he was also a radio and uh, television technology, uh, te uh, technician. And it was a time when repairing was completely normal. Um, if your TV was broken or your radio or something, it was normal to go to the to the next workshop or maybe repair on your, on your own. But this was completely normal. Everyone was, uh, if he was having a broken device, he was always thinking about repairing. But what happened, um, and yeah, what happened to us? Which one of you has still a workshop in, in, in his town or in his uh, city or whatever? Okay, I think so. The situation is even even worse. Um, in 10% of the areas in Germany, we have no technician for washing machines already. So what happened? What are the mortal sins to repair in the past? Uh, first, there is a problem with spare parts. I think we heard a, heard a lot of this uh, today. The low new device prices um, today we can sometimes only change complete assemblies. Spare part incompatibility. Um, missing documents, schematics, software and support. Training only for selected ones. So the blue part is, uh, which is yeah, um, by the industry or by the manufacturer. Misleading eco-labels and extension of warranty, which is uh, pretty controversial, but I, I will t uh, talk about this later. Um, this is the politics and the lack of young technicians and turning away from the specialized trade, which is uh, part of the, yeah, of the um, yeah, community maybe. We asked independent smartphone repair shops in Germany, um, what risk do you see for the future? And only 1% said uh, none. 94% said spare parts availability. 88% software. 83% dependence on Apple. And then dependence on other man manufacturers and miscellaneous. So the spare part is the big thing for us if we want to repair professional. If we don't get a spare part, we cannot repair. But also software is getting more and more problematic. So this is a smartphone repair, but what is with other devices? So we asked, um, um, what are the three most common reasons why these devices cannot be repaired? So uh, it's asked for washing machines, vacuum cleaners, and coffee machines, which are pretty popular for repairing in Germany. So um, the green and the blue, uh, the blue one is spare parts are too expensive, and or the green one is no spare parts are available. And it's for every 
or for all of these three uh, devices, it's over 50% is the spare part. So it's, uh, it's washing machine, it's nearly 80%. The problem is the spare part. Um, or vacuum cleaner is uh, 60, 64 and coffee machines is 78. Am I right? Yeah, I think so. Um, so the spare part is a problem. Why is that? Because new equipment is too cheap, which is another big problem. So repairing must be ec economic. So um, we can't only repair for them who, who repair by their heart because they want to save the nature. We, we, we must be cheaper than a new device. If we're not, um, the consumer will not repair. So 74% of consumers have already decided against the repair because it was too expensive compared to the new price. So you can see it here, um, 239 euro and 95 cent for a washing machine, which is not the cheapest one. Um, and the, the average repair cost is 170 euro for washing machines in Germany. This is a problem. Why 170 euro is a lot of money. Why is it? Um, it's only 80 euros for the working time. The, the rest is the spare part. So um, we're always we're talking about high um, loan in, in Germany, but it's not, not the high, lo high, high loan level. It's also the uh, too expensive spare parts. So I talk about um, missing documents, schematics, software and support. If we don't have a circuit plan, we can't repair the electronics. If we don't have exploded fuse, we have to search for spare parts. We have to, uh, to find them. To find, we have to, to, um, uh, yeah, to, to, to uh, put the spare part out of the device, and then we can uh, see which, uh, which number is on it, uh, if, if, there's, uh, if there's one written. Um, so it makes more work for us. It's, it, it's making um, repairing more expensive. We need the error codes, F15. What does it mean? What, what is broken? We don't know. We need these codes and we need spare part lists. Which spare part, which pump is built in this washing machine? Which uh, backlight is built in this television? And um, we need the software. If we don't have the software, it's getting more and more that it's impossible to change parts without the software. That it's more expensive if I, if I need a, a pre-programmed uh, electronics, for example, um, or can I program it on my own? It's sometimes it's only the half, half of the price. So software is important. All these things have one together. The manufacturer, they have it. Everything, <laughs> they, they have it. They don't give it to us. They don't want to give it to us. This is the only reason. Yeah, another problem for us is um, the professional training by the manufacturer is um, only for selected ones. So they can tell you, you are not allowed to repair and you are allowed because I like your nose and I don't like your nose. And this is what is already happening. For example, we have the AASP, uh, the Apple authorized, I don't know the full name, um, or the IRP, the Independent Repair, Independent Repair Program, um, which are pretty famous. But we have these kind of systems like for every or for a lot of manufacturers. Um, normally, not especially for these Apple uh, examples, but normally it's connected to a trade volume. So if, for example, Miele, a, a big German uh, manufacturer for washing machines, if I want to get their training, I need to have an amount of trade every year, like for example, 100,000 euro, um, to get the possibility to send my technician to them. Uh, so this is a little bit, uh, yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's a problem because if I only want to repair, I will not get the training. So I can't repair it, maybe. Or, and will not get the, the documents, the information, the software. So um, the, the other problem is if I send my technician to them, they can, they can uh, say, hey, you want to work uh, at our company? So this is really happening uh, uh, today. So we have another problem. The politics. I'm a handcrafter, as I told, so I'm always a little bit skeptic about legislation and uh, regulation. Why is it? Because if something is meant good, it's not made good. That's not the same. And we have this in the past, for example, the eco-labels. The idea is 
you buy a, 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 a device which is saving energy, so this is good. So there, you can't say anything against it. But the problem is, it says, says nothing about the lifetime of this device. So if I buy a washing machine, for example, for 199 euro with a eco label maybe P, um, and it's broken three times in the warranty, and it's changed two times, and after three years it's thrown away because it's the third, uh, fourth time uh, broken. This can't be good for our environment, I'm sure. And there's a lot of examples. So another problem is the, the standardization is not, the, it's fake. The, 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 the amount of energy that is used is like in the car. It's my new car, I have a, a smart for four. Um, it takes two liters less um, gasoline like the old one, which I also have on the paper. In reality, it's taking one more. So um, it's, it's uh, yeah, it's not the truth. And that not only the, 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 the car manufacturers, but also the, the um, tech, uh, electronics manufacturers, they are faking it. They have programs like a 30, 30 uh, degrees eco uh, wool washing program. I had this, this case, really. Uh, I get uh, like a really big letter of a, a, a customer of, of uh, I think, Electrolux. Um, he was sitting five hours next to his machine because this program is, is, is going five hours and he was holding every five minutes his hand on the glass. And he, he called the service, it's not getting warm. It went wrong, uh, to the one side, to the other side and, and so on. The technician came, he didn't fi find any failure. So he, he, he left and then he, he touched again and he said, it's broken, okay, we'll send a technician again, but you have to pay it if, if, if it's not broken. And then he said, okay, I will pay it, I, I tested it, it's cold. And then the, the, the service, service uh, uh, manager, he called him and, or he sent an email, I, I got it, black on white. Um, he told him, yeah, the 30 degrees program is for, uh, for clothes that is possible to wash with maximum 30 degrees. It's not getting warm. So this is how we are faked. So um, this is cold washing. So you can save a lot of energy if you don't need to heat the water. But you can do this with your old machine. You don't need to buy a new one for this. Um, another problem is the quality of the devices is getting down because of eco labels. Why? For washing machine, um, in the past we had the the body, I don't know in English the like the surrounding uh, housing of the of the turning part. Um, it was made normally made out of metal because it's long living. But metal is yeah, it's like the heat is going away. So nowadays they use plastics. It's better for the eco label, but it's not uh, good for the for the lifetime of this device. And we have, we have like this legislation, like millions of, of examples which are making the life of, of us as, as small repair shops in the, in the, in the areas, uh, it's making our life more hard. Um, yeah, and the, another maybe most controversial point is the, the, the topic warranty or guarantee, which is not the same. I, I'm not sure if it's in English, it's like a thing a little bit different, but in German, we have the guarantee, which is like the, the, like you can go to your manufacturer and you have the Gewährleistung, which is the warranty, um, which is between you and the, the, the dealer, the, the seller of the product. And I see for, for my network of independent repairers, the uh, warranty is the biggest danger for the repair. So why is this? There is a, um, a study from Deloitte from 2015. I can't see it on my screen. Um, what would happen if the warranty would be extended? More and more cheap devices are being bought which is uh, right for 74%. Manufacturers will exchange the devices if the exchange is cheaper for them than the repair, 93%. The specialized trade shops, workshops would receive fewer orders, 82%. Yeah, if I have, for example, five years of warranty, why buy quality? Why buy uh, German? For me, a German quality product. Why not the the Chinese one, which is uh, like half or a third of the uh, yeah of the price? 
yeah, if the industry has to guarantee a certain lifetime, I would like to have a warranty only on the spare parts because they can't do all the, uh, all the repair in, in, in Europe or in Germany or whatever um, because we don't have the, the professionals for this. So if I can get as a customer the, the spare part for free, I can ask my neighbor who was an electrician in the past or I can go to the, to the workshop in, in my hometown. I can do it on my own or I can call the, the, the industry and um, say, uh, ask them for a repair. I have all options and um, I can decide for the repair or against the repair and, and, and buy a new one. Um, I think the, the customer must decide this. And it has another, um, yeah, another uh, positive effect. If they have to, to, to have the spare parts, they are interested in not having too much of them. So I th they will think about using standard spare parts, like standard pumps, like standard motor, like standard uh, 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 screws or whatever, because they need to, to have every spare part uh, on stock, which is a price thing. So the new device will get more expensive and the repair will get less expensive, which is a pro for the repair. And I want a repair authorization for speci specialized companies, also during the guarantee period. I think in, in the, ah, here in the, in the um, micro soldering workshop, um, we talked, uh, or the, the, the presenter uh, talked about the warranty. If, if you open an iPhone, for example, the warranty is off. So you don't have any warranty anymore. Um, why? Why is that? And why is that okay? If I change the display on a, on a, on a, on a, on a smartphone and um, I do everything right and the battery is getting broken like two months later, why you don't have any, uh, any warranty anymore? That, that doesn't make any sense. If I break it, okay. But if I don't, why? So I don't understand this. But I think it's like common uh, that this is normal or that it's okay. I don't understand this, this part. Um, and I think it has another, uh, yeah, another uh, important thing is um, it's a, it's a, like, it's like better for the quality companies. If, if, if you are a German or a European uh, manufacturer, you normally, you have the structure for, for, uh, for spare parts. You have the structure for, for like all these um, uh, supplying of, of spare parts and you have the price. They already have the spare parts, not all of them. But I think uh, if we're talking about industries, we have to, yeah, they, we have companies that are doing a good job. They have spare parts, sometimes too expensive, yes, but they have spare parts. And we have other uh, manufacturers that don't even have spare parts on the first day after selling the, the device. So um, we have like, like a more fair competition because I know I can get a spare part for every device I bought. And I think this is important. Yeah, another big uh, um, problem for us as a society is uh, the lack of young technicians. Um, we asked our workshops and they said that 70% of the repair shops would like to repair more if they had employers, uh, employees to do it. Um, so my... Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, why is it? It's, it's, it's not attractive. I, I learned the job of Informationselektroniker für Geräte und Systeme, which is um, yeah, like a very long name and not an attractive name, but that's not the problem. It's um, not economic to repair. We do an absolutely um, uh, sustainable and yeah, a good thing for the planet as a job, as for our living. We, we're doing this like every day eight hours a day, five days a week. And um, this is yeah, a big part of our life. And I think it's important to, to, to help us, to save us, because we are, we are literally dying. As uh, the, the, the companies, they are going out of market because of age. The most, um, the most companies in Germany that are allowed to repair, they need a master. But it's not the master like the academic, academic master, it's in, like a handcraft master. 
So to repair a washing machine or a TV or another device with an, with an, with a plug, um, you need to be educated for four to six years. It's like getting a doctor. So I have nothing against it if I would like earn money like a doctor. Um, but in the moment situation, I can't, um, the job is great, but the money is bad. And um, so we need to change things. I'm not against this master system, but I think we have to, to rethink it. Um, we have to, yeah, to modernize it. So there's a lot of things to do. I think with the right to repair, we can get away from the throwaway society. And I think this is our uh, connecting um, thing and thank you for your attention so if you have any questions feel free I think time is running out and here's my uh, contact data <laughs>